So what's urban personal mobility going to be like in the year 2050? Our group believes that it's going to be fundamentally different from the way that it is today. I'm going to show you uh, some of those differences in this, uh, in this brief talk. Uh, the first thing I expect to see is fundamental reinvention of the automobile. The automobile, as we know it today, has had the same architecture for about 100 years. I think in the next few years we're going to see a fundamental transformation. And that's illustrated in the uh, little prototype that we built here in our lab. This is a little electric automobile that we call the city car. Uh, it has some features about it that are completely different from the traditional automobiles that you're used to. Firstly, there's no engine and there's no traditional drivetrain. Uh, the motors are in the wheels. The wheels are digitally uh, controlled so that they can perform all sorts of interesting maneuvers. They can um, uh, drive in all of the normal ways that you're used to. They can also spin around um, so that they point inwards and we can execute what we call an O-turn rather than a U-turn. We can park sideways. And in order to um, save space on parking, this vehicle folds up. It's something that's made possible by the use of these uh, robot wheels, as we call them. Let me show you uh, how this folds up. So it folds up to about half its normal length. It parks nose into the curb. Entry and exit are through the front, so you simply step out uh, onto the sidewalk and you don't uh, hit any cyclists with the door of your car. And it's uh, extremely comfortable because you're entering and exiting from an elevated position. The um, luggage compartment at the rear of the car does not get lifted, so that remains in a convenient location. And uh, the batteries for this are in the floor of the automobile. This vehicle has much less mass than the automobiles that we're used to. It's about half the length of a smart car when it's folded up. Uh, and it gets the equivalent of about 200 miles to the gallon on an energy equivalent basis. So an extremely economical vehicle. Now the other thing about these vehicles is that uh, we expect them to be used not only in the traditional private ownership mode, but what we call uh, mobility on demand mode. The idea of mobility on demand is that you have stacks of these automobiles located uh, in convenient places around the city. When you want to go somewhere, you simply walk to a stack of these automobiles, swipe a credit card or otherwise electronically identify yourself, pick up an automobile and drive it to a stack location that's near where you want to go. And you drop it off there. It's a one-way rental rather than two-way rental. And uh, we believe that this is an extremely efficient way of providing urban personal mobility uh, in the city. Final thing I want to mention about this is the way that electric charging works. Uh, of course, electric automobiles depend completely on getting electric charge. Now, we don't want to carry over the old idea of gas stations, the idea that you'd go into a gas station with electrical connections instead of uh, gas pumps as we have now. Uh, our idea is that you do automatic inductive charging in the parking spaces. So there's an induction pad underneath the automobile. You drive in over it. It's kind of like replacing your electric toothbrush in its holder. And you automatically pick up charge every time you park. So this gives, in an urban context, effectively infinite range. You never have to worry about um, recharging. You never have to worry about um, um, filling up with uh, gasoline. So to summarize, there are three fundamental things about the reinvention of the automobile for the year 2050. Lightweight battery electric automobiles, which are extremely economical and provide very convenient mobility. The idea of mobility on demand systems, which is a different way of organizing the automobile fleet in the city, much more efficient. And the third thing is automatic inductive recharging in the parking spaces, which is not only convenient, it also throws a lot of battery capacity into the electrical grid. Um, this means the grid can operate much more effectively because, in fact, these little automobiles can not only buy electricity, they can also sell electricity when the grid needs it. And this makes the grid much more friendly to clean, renewable, but intermittent sources of electricity like wind and solar energy. So low carbon, uh, low energy, very safe, very comfortable, very economical. Uh, that's the automobile of the year 2050.